Hello there, it's your Wisconsin Wine Guy. I'm back with another wine review. Now, these are wines that you can find on the shelves of your everyday liquor store, grocery store, and even some wine shops. I do a very, very simple system. Thumbs up, meaning I recommend this wine. Three quarters, you know what? I would drink this wine if it's at a party. I won't turn it down. And if it meets some of my other criteria, I may even bring a couple of bottles home with me. Not from the party, of course. <laughs> Halfway, not so much for me, but you give it a try. Let's all do what you think and thumbs down. Get that wine out of here. And then there's an extra special category. That's a double thumbs up. And that happens pretty rare for a double thumbs up. Meaning this wine is phenomenal and you must have it. And that happens again, pretty rare. So let's get down to today's show. I'm going to be sampling wines from two red wines from Rodney Strong. All right, so Rodney Strong 2017 Cabernet from Sonoma and Upshot, their new wine to the market, Upshot Wine. And this is going to be a blend. We can get to that blend in a minute. Both of these wines are coming in at 14%. We got, let's make sure here, 14.5 on the Upshot. And we're coming in at 14 and a half. So both these coming at 14 and a half. Now, if you're an old wine drinker like I am, you know, we remember Rodney Strong from back in the day, you know, back in the day before everybody really got into wine, where there's only a certain type of person would drink wine, mainly in the restaurants. And probably everybody was drinking French wine at that time. But anyway, back in the day, we're talking about, you know, the 80s, you know, when you had Rodney Strong, uh, BV, you had Sebastiani, you know, you know the names. I mean, they had some very nice wines. These wines were in the market at $25, $30 a bottle. So you kind of like, you know, got into their like first tier wines, you know, quality wines. But, you know, the market has changed a lot. We got second tier, third tier, fourth tier, and they reserve the high tier wines that you have to get from the winery. You know, but I've always been a fan of Rodney Strong, you know, uh, and, and their wines. So this is going to be very interesting, you know, in trying these wines in 2020 with the 2017 vintage. And I don't know if I gave you the vintage on the uh, Upshot. I know it's on here. Ah, 2017. They got this really fancy label. You know, I got to tell you more about that. So let's get it started here. As usual, I like to have wines coming from the same winery because I like to get an idea of the winemaker. You know, what you're thinking and how you're producing your wines. You know, some wineries have uh, multiple winemakers, but then there's always that time where you get a winery in which there's one winemaker and you get a, a feel for what that taste is, what the style of wines they like to produce. All right, so now, Cabernet Sauvignon is primarily Cabernet, 80%, but also has a little bit of Petit Syrah, Petit Verdot, Merlot, and uh, some Cap Franc, and a little bit of uh, Syrah in this one here. And then on the upshot, now, you can't really see this label, you know, oh, right, here we go, there it is. All right, so check this label out. I mean, this label is full of details. So we have to go to the website and, and load down a text sheet because all the information is here. So it gives information like, you know, what the blend is. So this is going to be a blend of Merlot, Zinfandel, Malbec, Riesling, Petit Verdot. Did you hear what I said? Riesling. Yes, Riesling, about 3%. That sounds like one of those uh, old Italian blends, you know, when they blend a little bit of white wine in with the red wine just to make a little bit more supple, fruity. Old school, you know, gives you the information on how long it was in a barrel, 16 months, you know, the different specs for the alcohol and pH and the bricks at the time, which is the amount of sugar in the grapes at the time of harvest. Appalachian, Sonoma, you know, goes through the vintage, alcohol on the front, when it was harvested and when the wine was finished. So this was harvested, grapes were harvested for this on 9 6 17, and it was finished in 10 7 17. And then here's a timeline. So this circle in the center is like a timeline of everything that took place. So it's a very informative label. I think you get a kick out of that. You know, you can like learn a lot about why just by reading the label on Upshot. How cool is that? So we're going to start this off first with the Cabernet, and then we'll go into the blend so get a look at that all right so nice let me get my white paper here all right so my white paper so i can have my background here all right so we're looking at the paper here we got a nice sort of uh i would say the the uh, upshot has a darker color i don't know if you can tell upshot here Cabernet here. I don't know if you can tell from here, but I'm looking at here on my white background. The upshot has a, a darker, deeper color uh, than the Cabernet. 
you know, now on the nose, ooh, I mean, both of the noses, you know, just, just smell nice. I mean, I wonder if I can pick up on some of those varietals in the, in the upshot. Ah, so dark berry, spice, both of them. You kind of get that, that subtle cedar or wood nose blended with the fruit on both of these. Ah, you know, you know, you hear that thing, you know, sometimes in calves, that whole pencil lead, maybe because I was writing with a pencil earlier, who knows, but you kind of pick up on that, like the fresh shavings, when you say, not, say, not to say pencil lead, but the fresh shavings, you know, when you're sharpening a pencil, you kind of pick up on that, it gives you that cedar nose, mm, pepper, spice, oh, really good paper, I'm going to go white pepper on this one, they say black pepper, I'm going to go white pepper, ah, oh, here, you know, Blackberry plum. I don't smell any Riesling. <laughs> no apple, no citrus, even though the Riesling is part of it. So let's give it a taste. First, we're going to do the rinse. You know how I feel about rinsing. You know, red wine, white wine must be lively, must feel some acidity. Here we go. Okay, that's the Cabernet. Wow, nice acidity. Finish is, uh, say, short to medium, okay? But it, it evolves. It, it goes It goes in like, you know, bright fruit. Then you get a little bit of that vanilla taste. Tannins are soft, okay? Very soft tannins here, all right? But still like short to medium, but more leaning towards the short on the finish. But this goes down easy. Now for rinse on the upshot. Okay, again, nice acidity. Mm. When I was rinsing, you notice I get I get a good rinse going on. You get kind of like the um, cherry taste, but then once I swallow, that's when like the plum and the dark berries come through. Renette rinse, you know, I get all that cherry. Again, here, um, finish isn't going to be long. It's going to be, again, short. You know, it gives you an impression it's going to be like, you know, like a long finish, but it's a very short finish, you know, but easy to drink. You know, and when I say short, meaning that it's not like pronounced, okay? It doesn't like completely go away, but it's not like boom, pronounced. It's just like, okay, it's there, it's intense. Then it starts to fade, 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 but it fades away quickly, you know, I find on my palate. But it's still not bad. It has a fresh taste to it. So let's uh, taste the cab again. Okay. Now, it could be coming off of, there's a little bit more fruitiness. Maybe just like kiss of sweet, a little more fruit just, you know, coming off of the upshot. So it kind of uh, changed the taste of the Cabernet a little bit. Made it seem a little bitter on the finish. Okay. So it's not going to be a Cabernet right home to mom about. Just a simple everyday drinker, rather light, 14% alcohol, but rather light, you know, um, Maybe it was over filtered, who knows, you know. Uh, but I'm going to go, I, I, I can't go halfway and I can't go three quarters. I'm going to go in between, okay. Um, I would drink it, but I wouldn't be a big fan, you know. Uh, going back in the day with Rodney Strong, I mean, all the wines that hit the market back in the day, I mean, it was like, it was pretty nice, you know. But we're coming forward now, you know. They're putting their, their top, top stuff on the market. So for me, um, like I said, not three quarters, but not halfway, just right, right in the middle, you know, on that one. So that's the Cabernet 2017. Now for the blend. Now the blend would have, ooh, really get that plum. Doing the finish. The blend has some fruit qualities that I think quite a few people would enjoy. 
But again, both will be dry. But it's a little bit more fruit qualities I think people would enjoy. You know, gives you that illusion of there may be a little sweetness to it, but it's not. You know, but that, that fruit just comes through. So I'm going to go three quarters on the upshot. Okay. Uh, I would definitely drink this. I mean, I like the combination of the grapes. I'm still trying to taste that Riesling, though, but I'm not getting anything for the Riesling. But I would still go at three quarters. I would drink this at a party. I probably wouldn't, you know, bring it in this home and sit on it, you know, but uh, I think it would be a, a decent everyday drinking uh, red blend. Okay, it's not going to, again, it's, none of these wines, in my opinion, are going to, you know, be overly complex. I mean, they're meant to be to be drank as everyday wines, okay? So, not quite three quarters on the Cabernet and three quarters on the Upshot. There you have it, Wisconsin Wine Guy. And as always, I tell you, let your palate be the guide with selecting your wine. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.